of the points that I wanted to make that I think is really important. In Article 1, Section 1, it also says the concept of power to uh, uh, borrow money on the credit of the United States. Well, on the surface, that would seem reasonable. But then if you look at Article 1, Section 8, Clause 5, it says Congress shall have essentially the exclusive power to claim money to regulate the value thereof. In other words, Congress had the exclusive power to issue the money. Well, if Congress has the, the capacity and the ability to create their own currency, then why would Congress need to borrow money? The only reason they would need to borrow money is so that they could repay the debt incurred by England in fighting the Revolutionary War. We were virtually in a state of bankruptcy. We were uh, on the ropes. And so the London bankers infiltrated the, the uh, Constitutional Convention, as far as I'm concerned, and they basically said, there are a few things that you're going to have to do. One of the things you're going to have to do is the debt. Now, when's the last time you heard of a nation who won the war having to pay war reparations to the people who, to the country that lost the war? Well, this happened in the case of the United States because it's we we agreed to pay the um, British six hundred thousand pounds sterling in the form of uh, war reparations to reimburse them for their expenses for the war. This was known as the Jay Treaty. It was about seventeen ninety four. So there's, if you really take a look at it, another thing that, that really strikes me funny yeah, is, is that in the Constitution it says all debts of the nation would be paid, must be paid in gold and silver. Well, who in the hell is that going to benefit? It's going to benefit the London bankers who owned all the gold and silver because in the colony we are earned, we had no, we virtually had no gold or silver, and the only way that we could acquire it is to borrow it from the London bankers, and so. Your point you made earlier, you know, who really won the war? Um, I think that's a very strong point that could be made that we were led to believe that we won the war, but for all intents and purposes, we just changed our status from being the property and the responsibility of the British government to the subjects of the British government. Well, yeah. they, the bankers had their men in our midst right from the beginning Alexander Hamilton was uh, the banker's man and uh, that's why one of my heroes is Aaron Burr well I think he should be on Mount Rushmore <laughs> I, think it, we could take, I think we could take Teddy Roosevelt off the mountain and put up Aaron Burr of course Aaron Burr had a few other problems which we're not going to go into at this time but but the the reason that one of the main reasons that I wanted to talk to you today is um, we heard that we quote before that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely and all of these organizations uh, basically are taking turns picking our pockets. You have you have the uh, pharmaceutical industry, you have the medical profession, you have the insurance industry, the banking industry. All of these organizations are all were all created by their stockholders for the purpose of picking the pockets of the American people without their knowing it. And one of the stories I heard the other day that was quite interesting, George Washington died of strep throat. How many people, uh, Clay, have you heard of that have died of strep throat? Not too many. It's a pretty, pretty rare occasion. Well, a lot of people today don't die of cancer. They die of the cure. They die of the treatment rather than the disease itself. Radiation, chemotherapy, these types of things will kill many of the people before the cancer does it. And I think one of the things that, that happened in the case of George Washington, he was uh, visited the day before he died by a allopathic doctor who bled him. He, you know, I think we, George Washington probably had eight or ten pints of blood in his body, and they drained him of about half of the blood in his body in order to try to expel the, the, the sickness. Well, obviously, since that time, we've come to the realization that this whole idea of bleeding a person to restore health is, 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 is a height of absurdity. And they also, they decided that in order to try to drive out the sickness, they also gave George Washington mercury. They infused mercury into his body. So with the reduction of the amount of blood in his body and the infusion of mercury, they killed George Washington. The doctors killed him. He died of the cure. 
not of the disease. And I am, uh, oh golly, about 15 years ago, I was diagnosed with adult diabetes. And I've been taking medication virtually ever since. And finally, I, I realized the fact that the pharmaceutical industry has no interest in curing diabetes. In fact, they have an interest in trying to uh, get more people on their medication and test strips. They want to manage the disease because it's very profitable to manage the disease. But if they were to cure diabetes, it would be financially disastrous to the medical profession and the pharmaceutical industry. I think that uh, most, most medical doctors are concerned about masking symptoms, hiding the symptoms rather than actually going to the root cause and curing the problem. And one of the, the things that I've determined to do is I'm going to do everything in my power to try to turn back my biologic clock. I'm 67 years old now, and I'm, as I get older, my vision is starting to be impaired, my hearing, uh, my hair is long since gone. There's a lot of things that are changing in my body, and I, I recently discovered some things that I thought were really very fascinating. Uh, obviously, our body consists of literally trillions of cells, and these cells are chromosomes, and the chromosomes have a, a, a portion of the chromosome is called a telomere. The telomere is the tips of the chromosomes. And when we're young, our telomeres are fairly lengthy, and as we get older and older, the telomeres begin to shrink. And as the telomeres get shorter, our health begins to deteriorate. And so the key to the fountain of youth that uh, Ponce de Leon had only known is if we take good care of our telomeres, we're going to be able to extend the quality and the quantity of our lives. We're going to be able, and if we could, frankly, if we could turn back the, I mean, if we could get, if we could lengthen our telomeres, we could actually turn back our biologic clocks and to be able to re be restored to the health that we enjoyed 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. And uh, the, this whole, all of this research on the telomeres has been taking place over the last 20 years or so. Um, a professor at the uh, University of uh, California in San Francisco, Elizabeth Blackburn, won the Nobel Prize in 2009 for her telomere research. And they, they've come to the conclusion that there are things in nature. There are herbs and there are things in nature that a person can take that can stimulate uh, the health of the telomeres and the actual uh, regeneration of the telomeres. Um, and let so, me, uh, uh, let me uh, interrupt you for just a moment. I uh, have a friend in uh, Albuquerque that's a biochemist, and she created uh, some uh, products for me a, a few years back, Free American Heritage and Health product line. And she discovered that there is a, uh, a substance in that's used to be in all of our food, in all of our plants. It's called fulvic acid. And she said it had a very unique property that it could heal cellular damage. But they had to go into prehistoric plant life to get this fulvic acid. And with, uh, with one exception, one exception, and that's uh, <laughs> that uh, the hemp plant has roots that go so deep. And hemp was used for hundreds of years in this country to restore our soil, to make healthier crops. Because it brought out, it reached deep enough to pull the fulvic acid out and into the plant. That's why hemp uh, heals cancer and other things. But uh, this fulvic acid would repair the damage done to cells. And I think that's exactly what Elizabeth uh, Blackburn was talking about. That's, uh, that's, uh, and now we're getting it more refined because uh, I hadn't even heard about the telomeres and uh, the tele. Uh, Maras in human, but you're only uh, you you've only got uh, an hour to spend with me, and I do have Elizabeth Blackburn's statements up here. 
and I'll play that for the second half of the show after we finish our conversation. It's uh, very interesting that with these surveys, they always tend to want us to study uh, laboratory animals, particularly mice. We uh, did a, a study where they took the mice that were uh, senior citizen mice. Uh, these mice uh, had very dull coats. Their, their, their uh, fur was uh, had shown the signs of aging, and their, they tested the brain uh, activity of these mice and determined that these mice were operating on 75% of their mental capacity that they had enjoyed when they were young mice. These, these mice uh, were not uh, able to do certain functions that uh, young mice could do very easily. They put them in a maze, which these same mice could navigate uh, of just, a, just a few years ago, and the mice had lost the ability to find their way through the maze. And they infused into these mice uh, some of these supplements, and lo and behold, these mice, the telomeres of the mice were lengthened, and as a result of the lengthening of the telomeres, the, the, uh, the mice were tested again, and they found that the, the um, mental capacity of the mice had been increased to the original 100% that they, that they had enjoyed when the mice were young. They put them into the maze, and lo and behold, these mice were able to navigate the maze. And so the decision that uh, was drawn was that uh, the Alzheimer's disease can actually be prevented uh, or offset or postponed. If you lengthen our telomeres, what the researchers are determining is, is that when a person develops Alzheimer's disease, they don't lose their memory, uh, the memory is still there, they just lose access to the memory. And so um, if a person were to take these products that are available by a company called Isogenics, they would be able to uh, take steps to reversing the biologic clock. Some of the, the people that have experienced incredible results are people that have diabetes, people with um, Parkinson's disease, people with um, arthritis, uh, high cholesterol, uh, high blood pressure, heart disease, vision and hearing issues, all of these different uh, functions. Also impotence and sexual dysfunction, uh, all of these things can be uh, virtually corrected if we lengthen our telomeres. The, the bottom line is, is that the shorter the telomeres, you, the, the worse your health. If you want better health, you need to have long telomeres, and you need to do everything that you can to to uh, accomplish that. And you're not going to do it by taking synthetic drugs that, that have been approved by the FDA or the pharmaceutical industry. You're going to have to go back to nature. I'm a firm believer that when God created us, He gave our bodies the power to, that we could heal ourselves if we would basically allow the body to function the way that it was intended. And I think a lot of the, the quick fixes that are offered by the medical profession, I mean, listen to the, the programs on television about the drugs and about the, all of the horrendous potential side effects. It's, it's absolutely incredible. The first 30 <laughs> seconds of, of every commercial for pharmaceuticals and the Super Bowl and about every other ad was for something for a pharmaceutical that key that wasn't even allowed 20 years ago you couldn't advertise prescription medications on the uh, television but the first 30 seconds told you how it could kill you how it could what it could do to you all the damage it could do and I and my question is how could anybody sane want to try some of this medication and and pay the, I know what the uh, the markup on these pharmaceutical drugs are over several thousand percent well Clay what about what about autism why is it that all of a sudden autism is becoming so prevalent do you think do you think there's any connection between uh, people uh, eating fruits and vegetables and developing autism or do you think it has more to do with the with synthetic drugs and the mercury and the lead and all of this other malarkey that uh, is infused into our into our systems, um, the water that we drink, the air that we breathe, the food that we eat—I mean, everything essentially has been corrupted. That's right. The chemtrails, 
the chemtrails are spraying you with aluminum. There are signs up on Mount uh, Rushmore, about Mount Rainier and uh, Mount Shasta warning you not to eat the snow because it's been contaminated with aluminum from these chemtrails. And to as far as autism is concerned, there are certainly uh, signs that the autism in our children are being caused from the vaccines they give them when they're born. Uh, it's um, so basically my my position is I want to try to do everything that I can to take control of my life. I believe that one of the worst things that we can do is trust our government. And I think, frankly, the schools, that's exactly what they preach. They preach obedience and that, frankly, that we, the people, are incapable of thinking for ourselves and making reasonable choices and that we need someone who is smarter than us to make the decisions for us. It's called indoctrination rather than uh, education. It's indoctrination. You're absolutely right. And I don't even refer to it as the public school system. I refer to it as the public fool system. Well, the, the, the schools essentially uh, help people that are in control stay in control. Uh, Joseph Goebbels, the propaganda minister of Nazi Germany, basically uh, indicated the fact that it was the role and the responsibility of the government to control public opinion. Because if you can control public opinion, you can basically control the behavior of the people. The Nazi, the, the, the German people, frankly, were basically lied to and they were deceived. But I don't believe that they were deceived perhaps any greater than we are being deceived today here in America. We think that we live in the land of the free, but in reality, we are all death slaves on the federal plantation. Um, but I would like to encourage everyone to do some Google searches or go to the internet, go to YouTube and look up telomeres and and, and learn about this and, and realize the fact that if, you're, if you have health issues right now, if you're overweight, if you have high blood pressure, cholesterol issues, if you're having migraine headaches uh, or any of these other symptoms, realize the fact that these are the direct result of getting your telomeres getting shorter. And if you, can, if you really want to solve the problem, you've got to go to the problem and you've got to do something to try to restore the health of your telomeres. You know, if you continue to uh, take the pills and do the things uh, without taking personal responsibility, everybody wants a quick fix. Everybody believes that you know they want they want instant coffee, instant tea, minute rice, and instant pudding. You know, life and health doesn't work that way. We need to realize that the the idea that if you fill your body with toxins and garbage. Your body can't effectively deal with it. We need to do everything that we can to make sure that our bodies are properly nourished. And part of that, uh, we need to we need to take a good look at the things that we're eating, the things that we're drinking. We need to uh, realize that when we we cook foods, we we destroy the enzymes and we we impact the body's ability to process the foods. Our colons are so impacted with fecal matter that the nutrients can't even get through the feces to get to the, the cells to nourish the body. I mean, our bodies, our colons were designed originally to be a sewer system, but they've become giant cesspools. And so we need to take responsibility for our health. Our mental capacity is directly related to our um, physical well-being. And our spiritual well-being, these things are all interconnected. And the people that, that uh, are in control of our society are doing everything they possibly can to keep us in the dark because they want to continue to have us basically be their uh, milk cows on their plantation. I have links up, up on, uh, under this show, under your name, to a number of videos and uh, articles about this uh, telomeres. I've got Elizabeth Blackburn up there and I'll be sharing some of her information with you shortly. Uh, I, also, I, also play, I also wanted to indicate that, that um, the purpose of the information that I'm providing 
is basically is to introduce everyone to the idea that there is a problem and that there is a solution. And uh, if you want to, if you want to take charge of your life and you want to take charge of your health, if you'd like to turn back the clock on aging, if you'd like to to discover the fountain of youth that, that unfortunately Ponce de Leon was unable to find, it's available to you today. And it's uh, from a company called Isogenics. They're, uh, they're a company which is located in Arizona, and they have a portfolio of outstanding products that will help you to be able to restore yourself to the optimal amount of health. Uh, and uh, I, I strongly suggest that you, you, you learn as much as you can about telomeres. And also, if you'd like to, to contact me, let me give you a phone number. It's 951-282-3271. If you'd like to call me, uh, I can uh, provide you with information on how you can obtain the product. Um, but um, like I mentioned to you when I talked to you about participating in your show today, Clay, I do have a appointment with a, with a gentleman here shortly, so I'm going to have to wrap this thing up fairly, fairly quickly. Um, you might you want to go ahead and see if you want to reach Carl Myers. You maybe you might want to talk to him for a little bit. Yes, sir. I can do that. Uh, just a moment here. Let's uh, see if we can bring him up. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Sorry about that. Changed. Please listen carefully to the since it appears you're calling back into a live show. We are reconnecting you now. Sorry about that. I hit the wrong button here. Let me uh, try to bring him up. Oops. Hang on a minute. What have we got here? Keith, are you back with me? Were you able to connect, Clay? Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. I uh, I hit the wrong button. I hit, instead of hitting the uh, plus sign, I hung up on us. But uh, I've got everything, um, almost everything, back up. All right, everything's back up. Now let me uh, see if I can uh, bring Carl back up. Um, that was a five. Uh, is five it, three zero. Five three zero. Okay, I got it. Four seven seven. I got it. I believe I got it. Let's see if we can get him up. Hello, Carl. Yeah, who's this? Carl, this is Clay Douglas, and I, you're alive on the Free American Show with Keith Broders. Uh, Keith gave me your number and right. asked me to bring you into our conversation about telomeres, about isogenics. And uh, Keith's going to have to uh, leave here in about 20 minutes. But um, I wanted to bring you up, and uh, maybe uh, you can uh, join our conversation here. And he says you've got some details on this stuff, how we can uh, lengthen our telomeres and lengthen our lifespan. How about that? You tell me, uh, tell okay. us a little bit about yourself, Carl. Okay, well, um, I got into this about two months ago. A friend of mine uh, shared it with me when I went to a presentation by someone in Sacramento named Dave MacArthur. He travels the country doing these presentations. He's coming to Southern California often. He's coming to Northern California and Oregon, um, all over the place, basically because of the results. Uh, he got started with uh, academics about eight years ago. And he was just in the business 
and not really doing great. But then all of a sudden, in 2011, Potter B came out, and he started doing what he calls he 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 did a thing called leading with Potter B when he did an introduction to people because he saw something that he could lead with that was one product that would have such dramatic changes. And it really didn't mean a lot to him back then. Just starting out, he just liked what he heard and liked what he saw. And the amazing thing is now that uh, two and a half years later, Dave MacArthur is one of the top income producers in the company, making about, he's made about $2 million. And uh, because of the results of this product, the uh, results are that, you know, the uh, synergistic blend of ingredients in product B are what are um, quite astounding because everybody that I've uh, introduced it to has had pretty much a, a great result. Pretty astronomical things happen. That's not just a vitamin. It's, it's an amazing thing. And uh, you get this in your body and uh, you give your body the nutrients it needs to, to do that uh, with, with uh, your cells on the cellular level. You know, there's about a quadrillion things inside each single cell. And when the Russians discovered these telomeres 50 years ago, they didn't have the technology to do anything with them. Along comes 2004, roughly, and there's a group of engineers and scientists that are looking at, at this discovery the Russians made. And by now we had, by then we had uh, electron microscopes and we could really take a look. So they, they look like a slinky. That's the tip of the uh, chromosome, the cap. They're kind of like there's a shoelace with a cap on it, and apparently, you know, we're, we're born with a certain amount of these, what they call bases of these telomeres, and as each time the cell divides and it, it duplicates, a tip of the telomere is wearing down a little bit, and so by the time we're 50, 60, 70 years old, when we uh, have had our cells divide as a lot of times and the tip of the telomeres are worn off, the cells are unable to divide anymore and they die. And then eventually we die because our cells, it's the cell science, the basic cell biology, if there's a word for it, senescence, I think you call it, that's where the cell cannot duplicate anymore. So then uh, with, with isogenics and uh, the two gentlemen, Dr. Andrew, you know, Bill Anderson and, and Dr. Andrew, the two people that, that were, were uh, put together by isogenics by I think his name is Greenwald. There's a guy in Greenwald that put together those two guys and it was really an amazing leap because it was where science meets technology and it was not a meeting that would have normally happened, but this, this guy was lucky. He got these two guys together and they, they hit it off. They started doing testing um, with the most of, and they built the most advanced telomere lab in the world, which is still today the most advanced telomere lab. And uh, What's happened since then is the, the discovery of the uh, ability to create this product with these botanical ingredients that uh, have an effect on these telomeres. Um, with the discovery of the telomerase gene, it was, it was, that's the main key thing too. That's the uh, enzyme that actually does this. And in, in 2009, the Nobel Prize was awarded to three Americans for the work that led to the discovery of the telomerase gene. Dr. Andrews was the guy that discovered this uh, activity, co-discoverer. Co he didn't get his name on it, but uh, he was the actual discoverer of the uh, telomerase gene. I so, will uh, be, uh, in the latter half of this show here, I, will, I do have a video up of an interview with Dr. Andrews that I'll be playing for people. Let me ask you okay. this, is this, uh, I, I had talked, I uh, worked with a biochemist uh, to develop a product line, and she talked about prehistoric plants having an ingredient called fulvic acid. And she said the fulvic acid was uh, capable of restoring cellular damage, which sounds like what you're describing here. And it was only found in uh, prehistoric plants because our soil had been so depleted by over farming, by the elimination of hemp as a rotational crop, by the uh, uh, <laughs> Roundup spraying our, our food with uh, bug poison, uh, Roundup. 
it didn't exist in our soil and doesn't exist in our food today like it did hundreds of years ago. Do you know if, uh, if uh, this fulvic acid is part of what they're talking about or what they found? I'm not familiar with that story at all. Um, it's okay, though. It sounds very close to what has, you know, basically led to the discovery of the telomerase gene and the, uh, the things we can and cannot say with the company because, you know, in effect, uh, you know, they're, they're required to be scientific proof of the ability to, quote, say that we can grow tel telomeres. We can't say that right now technically because it requires documented scientific evidence, which is in the works by isogenics. They're doing clinical trial studies right now where they're taking people and measuring their telomeres prior to giving them product B, the product, and then uh, after three months, six months, nine months, they're, they're measuring the telomere length. And until that testing is completed, we can't say that it grows telomeres. We can say is it gives your body what it needs to heal, and and that provides amazing results with this, this product. Uh, it's the ability for body to heal. Some take product that people with all kinds of health conditions have those health conditions basically fall away. Now, I've noticed on the uh, Axigenics site, which I put up on the uh, chat room for people to take a look at, uh, they don't talk about li extending life. They don't talk about anything except weight loss. And uh, is that because of that part of uh, that side effects? And we are, the America is up in like 40% of their most overweight people in the world. So... Yeah. And uh, that's something I guess uh, since it's such a common problem, it's uh, probably a good marketing campaign for this. Yes, uh, it is. The, uh, the result of our diet is, is considered, in my opinion, the cause of that. It's a process of GMOs. Things are prevalent in our in our diet. Ninety some percent of the products in the grocery store are artificial in there. In most states, they're not even labeled. Most people aren't aware that they're eating a genetically modified food, including the fact that all corn, most of corn, about over 90% of the corn in America right now is GMO, meaning it is you're eating Roundup wheat killer when you eat anything with corn in it because they genetically engineer corn to grow the, the uh, chemical inside the Roundup wheat killer, which kills wheat. And... Uh, this chemical causes the insect's stomach to explode, and it's put in there to prevent insects from eating the corn. But what about humans? When they eat this thing, it causes uh, the stomach to explode. It's my understanding that rats won't even eat genetically modified corn that we're feeding to our children. Right. We have a, a disgusting situation where greed has taken over. The corporate, the corporate America has been bought and sold for by greed. In most major companies, and their primary source of uh, their money is, you know, production of food, and uh, you know, the genetically modified food by Monsanto and uh, Dow and Corning, Dow Corning. Their goal was originally to corner the market and make all seeds uh, produced only by Monsanto available for the market, so that. Everybody would be, you know, buying from Monsanto and couldn't, you know, produce anything in nature that would do the same thing. Well, when you spray Monsanto, when Monsanto sprays the crop, corn crop with the uh, Roundup weed killer and grows it into seed, then we eat it. We have really all kinds of health conditions are, are popping up. Uh, you know, so I put out a, an article I wrote that's, that's uh, called corn, wheat, and soy, what things to avoid in our diet. And I, I put this out because I found out that uh, by eliminating corn, wheat, and soy from your diet, all kinds of amazing things happen this is before I got started with uh, isogenics. So now I add that to my, what I teach people is, you know, um, avoid anything in a box of processed food, especially corn, wheat, and soy, because they're all GMO, 90, over 90% are genetically modified. Uh, it's been proven in South America and Ecuador that uh, the uh, GMO soy is causing birth defects. 
the growers of this product down there uh, were experiencing lots of birth defects. In India, uh, over 250,000 Indian people, farmers, have committed suicide because of these genetically modified products. The farmers in India could not, well, they, they were told that this magical seed would grow and they would make a lot of money. And they found out that, that when they planted the seeds, that the, the products didn't grow what they had envisioned at all. And these farmers could not provide um, a living to feed their family, and they committed suicide, over 250,000 so far. So we have an awareness, and, and of course, with our media being completely controlled by the corporations, paid basically to lie to us about stuff. We're not told in the schools, we're not told on the media that this is unsafe. They're, they're telling the people on the media that uh, GMO stuff is the best thing in the world to feed humanity and save the earth. So that's the one side, and that's the corporate greed leading that. Well, along comes people like uh, Dr. Andrews and the corporation Isogenic, which has the master formulator Bill Andrews, and uh, you know you can you can tell from uh, previous work he's done over 30 years with other companies. He was the master formulator for those companies putting together their vitamin concoctions. He told these companies to put together certain ingredients in these to make them a, a, a very good product. But companies decided that uh, they would not follow his instructions and they put cheaper stuff in, like fillers and chemicals, to make the bottom line grow. The result is you've got a lot of vitamins that do nothing but go right through you and they don't, they don't really, you know, aren't, aren't energized in our body or, or uh, accepted, absorbed by our body properly. So we've got basically chemicals in the food supply that are causing all kinds of health conditions and because of foods are processed in the grocery store, anything in a box, I've been told by another lady uh, that it's better off, you're better off to eat the box if things come in with GMO in it than actually eat the product. Well, I can't well you that. know, is uh, uh, this, uh, this is just my opinion. I think this is all done uh, on purpose. Because the doctors don't make any money if you're well, you know, and uh, the uh, they they actually wrote it in stone. They wrote it in stone that uh, they want to eliminate uh, all but 500 million people on Earth to make us easier to handle, I guess. Well, that was the uh, story that I was told also that uh, there was a classified group of people known as what we call the elite or the cabal or the Illuminati, and their, their plan was to, they couldn't control 7.5 billion people, so they, they did want to wipe out about 7 billion people because they felt they could control about 500 million on Earth. But that plan has been, from, from what I've heard and from what I've seen, that plan has been changed. Uh, this goes to my spiritual teachings. Uh, when I first started leading with this this morning is uh, Dave MacArthur. When he does his presentations, he tells people that he believes that Product D is divinely inspired because that's his belief that uh, to go back to the source of nature, get natural ingredients and get them in our body and avoid, you know, the chemical process junk, we can turn our health around, we can lose weight, we can be healthy, we can exercise, get... Uh, you know, with this with product B, there is uh, ingredients like ashwagandha, which is something that builds muscle mass and gives you endurance and strength. And uh, that's why this product is, and the company makes things for, uh, you know, I think it started out primarily as a weight loss company because there is a huge business potential there because you look around, everybody, you know, you see in America walking around, there's... Um, Children drink an average of two and a half gallons of soda a week, and a lot of that is diet soda with things like aspartame. <laughs> and you know that's another chemical that's causing all kinds of harm. But are people paying attention? Are people reading labels? I mean, the the worst tasting, the worst tasting, worst tasting thing I ever put in my mouth was a can of diet soda that got warm on my boat. And uh, I opened it up and took a sip, and that, that's uh, it, it turned to formaldehyde. It was like drinking formaldehyde. 
Well, yeah, the, uh, uh, the ingredient in diet soda, it does, it, when it's heated by your own body temperature, it converts to formaldehyde. So you are getting formaldehyde in that, in that diet soda, which is just wonderful, you know. So if you want to drink formaldehyde, and, and go, go for it. But, uh, you know, people are waking up, and um, I don't drink any, any soda at all. Um, haven't done it for years. Um, I primarily eat organic, raw, natural foods mostly, and it's quite a different shopping experience when you go to the grocery store and you avoid commercial processed foods because, and, and non-GMO stuff because well, about over 90, 95% of the stuff in the grocery store is GMO. Where I live, we're very fortunate to have three organic restaurants and four uh, organic stores. So we're very lucky because there's a lot of places in America that don't have that at all, and people are stuck buying the, the GMO stuff. Now I've got I've got links up on my website, Carl. Let me ask you about that. To uh, uh, some uh, company that's producing, uh, uh, and it's available in 50 states, but it's a uh, component that's found in uh, marijuana or hemp. And hemp, uh, the the nutritional values of hemp are astronomical as well as the commercial aspects of hemp. Right. There's and a I've got a company amino acids. I've got a company called Canaway that's talking about this. And to me that's uh, one of the reasons they made it illegal. Not only did it compete with Monsanto, not only did it compete with DuPont, it uh, it also uh, competed with Hearst Paper Company because for a hundred years our paper in the Encyclopedia Britannica was printed on hemp paper. You don't have to cut down forests to make uh, tabloids. Right. That's the whole thing about the war on weed that was created in the 30s with the, the paper manufacturing companies. Uh, they, they purposely made it uh, illegal, made marijuana look bad and because they didn't want competition. And so it, it for the tree companies, that was their mainstay thing. They wanted to have, uh, you know, they didn't want hemp around because it, it, you're right. It, you could grow a ton of hemp on uh, on one acre of land, and you wouldn't have to cut down any trees at all. So yeah, there's a, a huge, you know, difference in, in things, why things are done. It's, it's, the bottom line has been primarily, in my opinion, corporations have gotten greedy, filthy greedy. It's been disgustingly greedy. Uh, because it's so rampant that uh, companies like Monsanto, which I've heard is going to be going out of business this year because of lawsuits, so many lawsuits because their their uh, genetically modified seeds are contaminating organic crops, and there's nothing that can stop that. And they're being sued, and things are changing. Where it used to be that the bad guys would always win, and nothing would stop them from doing what they're doing. Well, things have the coin has flipped. So now the people are waking up, they're looking at the food supply, they're looking at hemp, they're looking at, uh, now we have, what, two states in America where you can buy marijuana and you can walk in and you can grow it uh, in Colorado and, and Washington. So things are changing. There's over 20-some states that are uh, looking at already legalizing uh, the growth of hemp because there's over 2,000 products or something like that that can be made from hemp alone. And the uh, amino acids, there's 19, I think 19 amino acids in the hemp seed, which are astronomically, you know, it's in World War II, hemp was used as oil for fighters in, in, the, in the airplane it's because it's, it's so useful. And, uh, of course, now we have uh, the current situation where it's, the hemp is expanding and we have, there's, there's bricks made from hemp that you can use for housing uh, that are, when you build a house out of this stuff, it's, you don't free. need an air conditioner or a heater because the hemp is so well insulating. And That's amazing. right, hemp free. And Henry Ford, Henry Ford, <laughs> built a, hang on a second. The media won't tell you. Are you frustrated with your elected politicians? Get the news behind the news uh, at truthradio.com. At Truth Radio, you can listen live or listen to a large selection of archived programs on demand. Listen when you want to. TruthRadio.com. The truth is out there. All you have to do is open your mind and listen. And you can get to Truth Radio. You can get to the Constitution Club. 
you can get all of the information on this isogenics and the uh, telomeres are at freeamerican.com and feel free to make a donation there folks because I don't take advertising I tell you about products like this because they're good for you because it's good because these aren't corporate people a couple of things I can't tell you folks I can't tell you whether we're under communism since every plank on the Communist Manifesto is intact in America today. Ninth plank is corporate farms. Or whether we're under fascism, as Thomas Jefferson warned you, if you ever allow a private bank to issue your money, the banks and the corporations that spring up around them will leave your children homeless in the land we conquered. Keith Broders has been my guest today. And Carl is with us. Carl, what's your last name? Uh, Myers. Myers? Yeah. No relation to Stanley Myers, who uh, developed the uh, water-powered no. car, huh? No, not at all. Um, no, I'm just a person from Glass Valley, originally from San Jose, California. We went to the Sierra Nevada Mountains in uh, about 15 years ago in a little town called Grass Valley. Um, yeah, we'll stop, uh, stop, by the, uh, stop by the hotel up there and say hello to my ex-wife. Tell her you were on my show. Holiday, that? Holiday Lodge. Okay. Her name's Janet, and uh, she's a lovely lady. I love her. Uh, just stop in and tell her you were just on my show. <laughs> we still talk. <laughs> we still talk. We were married for 24 years. Okay. But, Keith, are you? do you have to go? Can you stay with me for a while longer? What's going on, Keith? Keith, you still there? All right. I may have lost Keith. He did have something else to do. But, hey, that's a, that's a beautiful. I used to live up in Placerville. I published my first magazine out of Placerville. And uh, okay. that's that's a wonderful area. Sure enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, I live in Rough and Ready, actually, which is about three miles from Grass Valley. It's an old gold mining town. There's a lot of uh, gold discovery history in the California foothills. And, but uh, in conclusion, getting back to the, the uh, discoveries with the uh, telomerase gene and the work that's been done by this, this company and these people, uh, there are so many fantastic results from this product B that uh, I've only been involved for two months and uh, brought about 13 or 14 people into the company. And from there, they have brought people in. So now I've got about... I've affected about 50 people, and everybody has pretty much had some amazing results immediately, more in, more energy, and the cognitive thinking process changes where people have had trouble thinking and clearly remembering things. It starts to come back. And then the next thing people start to notice is their skin starts to change. People with dry, patchy skin problems, like all over their certain parts of their body, is is the repair of the telomeres is causing the cells to function properly. Things like myself, when I had high cholesterol, um, went to my VA doctor after 30 days on product B, my cholesterol went from 263 down to 213. My blood sugar was a little high, approaching diabetic, diabetic portions. It was uh, normal after that 30 days. And... Uh, I've introduced this to quite a few people who, uh, one of them is a little lady that's uh, up in Washington State. She's a nurse and she's a polio survivor at the age of 67 years old and had a really amazing result. After five days on this product, she started walking without her walker. And now she's walking around without her need for her walker. And people who see her and know her are, are wondering what the heck she's doing, what new doctor she's seeing. And she just tells them, oh, I just, I'm just taking this. And uh, there's one doctor that uh, on the videos you can see when you do a search on product B, you find out that uh, there's uh, a lot of doctors that have been uh, influenced by this. Uh, we have on our team alone, we have over 400 doctors and nurses that are, you know, on, on the product B and talking about it because it gets results. It works. It's something that uh, works so well. Dave MacArthur, who's the guy that does these presentations, started leading with product B in his presentations two and a half years ago. He's now made, uh, uh, become a millionaire with Isogenics on Isogenics. 
by putting out quality products without chemicals and, and crap in the products has created over, let's see, 103 millionaires so far. They're about a 10-year-old company, and not too many companies can say they've created 103 millionaires, and they're the only MLM company to ever receive an award from Congress, which, you know, there's a lot of uh, people say that, well, that doesn't really mean much because who's Congress that they're all corrupt and paid off, you know, but that's on another light. But uh, in the reality of things here, what we're waking up to with the health and wellness and prosperity coming to a lot of people, the first thing, like I say, you know, everybody can wake up to the fact that our food is contaminated, our water and air is contaminated. So, you know, I drink filtered water, I eat organic food, and, and I avoid anything, anything with corn, wheat, and soy, anything GMO. Uh, and shopping for food is quite different now because, you know, what do we eat? A lot of people eat bread. Well, wheat is most one of the most contaminated seeds out there in the market with pesticides and herbicides. You, uh, you have sandwiches, you eat bagels, you eat all kinds of bread, you know, and, and muffins and stuff like that. Fast food is horrible with, with a, a process chemical. So, you know, waking up to this stuff is, is a, a giant leap for some people because we've been led to believe that anything in the grocery store in America is safe. And growing up when I was a kid, that's what I believed too. My dad taught me that in the 1960s, he found out that uh, the wheat, or excuse me, the uh, they did a measurement of one crop in America, which was uh, had a reduction from the 1930s to the 1960s, which was about about 50 years. 50 percent of the nutrient contact was was gone. So he, he was basically telling me when I was a kid that wow, if, if it's if not in the soil, it's not in the food, and uh, that's true today. We're we're not rotating the crops properly. We're not letting the land rest. The farmers are being blasted by competition from GMO contamination. So, you know, it's a big a big journey to get on to, to get yourself in a situation where you say, all right, I've had it. I've had enough of this GMO crap, and uh, I want to repair my telomeres and let my cells reproduce properly. So I'm getting on some a, a product that uh, will help restore my telomeres. And that's what we have. Um, one of them, in my case, the, uh, the effects of this are what I say is basically astounding. Because uh, everybody that's getting on this are feeling the same effects in certain ways. It's a little bit different in every person, of course, because everybody has been eating, you know, rather differently. And so take a look, everybody, at what you're what you're eating. Look at your stuff in your pantry. And if, if something says it contains corn, wheat, and soy, and it's not organic, don't eat it. Don't buy it. If, they, if you stop buying it, they won't, they won't start making it. They won't keep making it. So we need to wake everybody up in the grocery stores and stop buying the processed food crap, you know, and start getting, you know, people complain that organic's too expensive, and they, they really complain about that, but in reality, you can afford to buy organic. You can get organic cabbage and organic potatoes for not much money, and that's a meal. You know, you'd be a lot better off. Um, so, you know, getting back to Ipogenics, the, 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 they are primarily starting out as a weight loss company, and they have made major strides in various people, with, as you see on their website, um, pictures of people in their 100-pound clubs and stuff like that. You need to get people on uh, that lose weight in the, in the national, and you get people down to the weight they weighed in high school, you know, that's quite amazing. I'm, I'm myself, I've lost about, in the last year, by switching my diet over to this organic raw stuff, I lost about 25 pounds, and I don't really, I wasn't really obese at all. I just needed, I had a little extra, you know, that was around that uh, is just wonderful to have not there anymore. So, in, in conclusion, I'd just like to say that if, if anybody would like to try this, there is a 30-day money-back guarantee. And uh, what what I've had happen was it, it makes people happy when you get these results. So I'm, I'm not in this business to try to make money. I tell people I'm here to offer the healing and health benefits. And I've never seen anything like this. And that's what the, there's a guy named Dr. Gabriel Cousins who's uh, created the Wellness Center. He's on the Internet. Look him up. He's on our team. 
And he has said that in his 40 years of clinical research and experience, there's nothing like anything like potted beef. Absolutely nothing. There's a conference call we had a couple weeks ago with another uh, chiropractic doctor in Las Vegas who said basically the same thing, that in his 35 years, he's never seen anything like this. The Wellness so, Center, is that the, uh, is that the uh, company in Colorado that's doing the uh, hemp also? Uh, not familiar, not sure. Okay. No. Dr. Gabriel Cousins is just, uh, if you look him up on the internet, you'll find him. He has a newsletter and he puts out, he's, he's on our team, he's, he's with Hypogenics, and uh, he promotes it too um, for wellness because, you know, uh, getting getting people well is really, you know, a, a really nice benefit for everybody. Uh, we have a sad situation with uh, what's happened is the, the telomeres are born with a certain number of bases of these telomeres, kind of like a slinky. And you start with 10,000 when you're born, you lose 5,000, and so you, by the time you're about five years old to so about 70, you have these 5,000 bases to work from. And by society with our pollution and our processed foods, the damage we cause to our telomeres causes all kinds of health problems. And so having a product that regrows them is pretty wonderful. Um, well, we do have uh, product B antioxidants plus a telomere support is available for eighty dollars and seventy nine cents, and free shipping. Free shipping, and you can get to that freeamerican.com right below this show, right below uh, all of this stuff. There, product B antioxidants. While we've been talking, I've added, to, added it onto my website. I'll keep it up on my website. And uh, it's available. You can save about $18.21 or 18% discount by ordering this through the Free American Amazon site. And one last thing I'd like to say is uh, if people do a search on Product D on the Internet, they will find it available on Amazon.com and eBay. And this is a big warning flag to everybody. In the 1960s, for example, companies in Taiwan were cloning record albums because they found a market. They were copying Beatles records, and they were, they were making them. And they're doing the same thing with product B. They're cloning the bottle, the label, exactly like it looks like when you buy it from Isogenics. There's an article that's available. I haven't got it yet, but there is a product you can buy on the Internet for close to the same price or if not cheaper. But it's not the real thing. It's not product B for mycogenics. It's, it's Are you saying that this Amazon uh, site, this Amazon product, that's got product B, is not? Uh, it's not the real thing. It's not the real thing. Not the real thing, exactly. Okay. What you about know. now? Does uh, Isogenics have a have affiliate a system that I can just sell it uh, direct to my people through them? Well, they, if you call them up and ask them about this, they have a whole department set up where they're going after and uh, try to, to investigate these uh, these companies, the sources of these uh, bottles of product D. And it was found that, you know, in the action of doing this work, that uh, you don't even know what is in those caplets that's sold by these, this company uh, cloning these bottles because it could be sand as far as we know because people are not getting the results at all because they're not getting the real thing. I've had two people in my organization that thought they could get a better deal and buy product B on the internet because when they did a search, they saw it pop up on the screen, and it's been determined that it's, it's just a company that's, that's cloning the product illegally and uh, going after the market because they can make a bottle, a fake bottle of product B for three bucks, and they're selling it for seventy-five or eighty bucks on the internet. They're making a huge markup on, on profit, and they're not getting the real product out there because they're not isogenics and they're causing the bad name for the product because it's not the real thing. So don't even try to buy a product off the internet like uh, this with, with from uh, you know, eBay or Amazon. All right. I will contact the uh, company here and uh, try to get the, uh, make sure we get the real thing. I've got yeah, a that's... number for them, so uh, I will call them up. Yeah, we have uh, a team of people that are in the business of um, with Isogenics 
you would first join, you become an associate, and uh, it's a basic, you know, MLM company where you have a, a minimum business volume of product you need to uh, purchase every month to qualify to make commission, and that's 100 DV, and each bottle of product B with Isogenics is 50 DV, so by joining as an associate for $30, $29.95 a year, you get a 10% discount on the products, and then you become an associate, and when you get two people in and you help them get two, there's company bonuses and things like that. Well, that tell you what, you to take, uh, take my number down. My number is 520-413-2397. Now, I'm very, very tight on funds here. I'm looking, I, I, I just strictly own donations for doing this show. I don't uh, take advertising from anybody. And I don't know if I can afford the uh, $39 or whatever it is. So if you'll call me after the show here, off of the air here, maybe oh, we, can work out, uh, we can work out a deal so I can become an associate. So I can offer the, the product straight to them, other than doing it as an affiliate off of Amazon. Could you repeat that number for you? 520-413-2397. And Carl, you can go, if you go to freeamerican.com, my phone numbers are there, my cell number is there, my uh, Skype is there. It's uh, Free American 69 on Skype, Free American 69 on Facebook, Free American 69 on YouTube. This uh, this show with uh, with you and Keith Brothers will be on YouTube. It will be on uh, my site and link there. And all of the information of the uh, the videos uh, with Elizabeth uh, will be on there. The uh, links uh, with uh, Forever Young will be on there, and uh, I've got uh, links or telomeres of the key to aging and cancer. All of that's linked on my site, freeamerican.com. I try to get the best information. I try to uh, let people know. You can forward this show. If all you got to do is click on Keith Broder's name on this date and that will take you to blog talk radio you can save the whole show as an mp3 and forward it to everybody everybody that you know anybody that you know let people know what kind of show i do what the truths that i try to get out and uh, everything i do I, I i do it for the good of the people Well, bless you, and uh, that's wonderful to uh, to know and hear for everybody, because we all need to uh, make a big change, make a big leap to getting healthy and getting healed, and getting yourself in a situation where you're not 300 pounds, and uh, you can uh, restore your telomeres, repair the damage from toxins and the society, you know, and the pollution in the food and the air, everything is is damaging to all of us. So we can do a little bit here and there and, and getting your, uh, yourself educated about what telomeres are and what the telomerase gene is. It's a really fascinating discovery. So, yeah, it's a really good thing to know for everybody. I've added isogenics on there, but, uh, you know, if, if uh, you want to work with me, I don't care whether they buy it from me or whether they buy it from you. I mean, I want to make some money off of this because I, I, I do this. Without any support, without any backup, without any help, without any investments, and I don't go to banks, and I don't uh, deal with uh, pharmaceuticals, and I don't take advertising. I just don't do that. Okay. So, uh, and if you need a refer if you need a reference here, uh, go talk to Janet at Holiday Lodge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will. All right. All right. Uh. Carl, I'm going to let you go here. I'm going to play some of Elizabeth Blackwell's uh, information here. Great. Thank you. And thank yeah. you. Thank you for being on my show. You're welcome. Have a good day. All right, sir. Bye-bye then. Bye. -bye
All right, here. Let's see what we got. Let's see what Elizabeth Blackwell, Blackbum, Blackburn, Blackburn, Elizabeth Blackburn has to say about the rows of telomeres while I'm warming my coffee in. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Blackburn. I'm in the Department of Biochemistry and Biophysics at the University of California, San Francisco. And in this set of lectures, I'm going to talk about telomeres and telomerase. And I'll get to their implications for human health and disease. The first part of this lecture series of three lectures is going to introduce you to the roles of telomeres and telomerase. So let's begin by focusing in on what goes on at the very heart of a cell. Now, if you look at a cell, which is just about to divide, you look under the microscope and you stain the chromosomes, this is what you would see. Those blue double sausage-like objects that you can see all over this, uh, this microscope slide are the human chromosomes, and the DNA is just duplicated, which is why they look double. Now, if you look closely, you can see red spots, two red spots at the end of every double chromosome pair. And these red spots are a molecular code that's lighting up the telomeric DNA that's found in common at all of the chromosome ends. And I'm going to tell you a lot about that telomeric DNA. Okay, so why are telomeres important? Their role is to cap off the ends of chromosomes. So that's a simple concept, but we can dive down into it further and think a little bit more about what that actually means. So when we think of the end of the DNA, that can be two kinds. There can be the natural end of the DNA, such as the one that we see here, the ends of the chromosome, the DNA. And there can also be DNA breaks. Now the job of a cell is to seal up any DNA breaks that happen by accident. And so a major part of this capping function, which is one of the aspects of telomere function, is to prevent the telomeres from undergoing those very DNA transactions, those very DNA reactions, that are undergone by a broken DNA end. So if you have a break in the DNA, it can be sutured together by, for example, recombination, or just simply the two broken ends can be ligated right back together by end-to-end -end fusions. Also, such DNA breaks are subject to degradation. Now, the telomere protects, it caps the end of the chromosome and protects against all of these kinds of things that would normally happen to a broken DNA end. How does it do that? The DNA sequences that you find at the ends of chromosomes, repeated over and over, are fairly similar in nature to each other. They're, they're relatively simple sequences, and they're too si simple to code for any proteins. They're not genes in the sense of coding for any proteins or RNAs. In humans, for example, this repeated sequence is found up to a few thousand times can be repeated over and over at the ends of the chromosomes. Another feature of the chromosomal DNA is that, of course, like most of the DNA of the chromosome, which is duplex DNA, double-stranded DNA, the very end is single-stranded. And in fact, the DNA strand is oriented 5 prime to 3 prime, going toward the end of the chromosome. And that turns out to be important. So, we have now the telomere structures to begin with. We have, at the, again, if we blew up the end of the chromosome, we have these highly repeated sequences made up of a G-rich sequence that the repeat unit repeated over and over again. As I said, it doesn't encode any protein sequences, but each of these repeated sequences is like a little attractive magnet for specific proteins that bind sequence specifically to the telomeric DNA. They bind to the telomeric repeats for the double-stranded portion, and some of them bind the single-stranded portion. And it's actually the G-rich strand that's overhanging the single-stranded, uh, forming the overhang overhanging end here. 
always together make some form of higher order architecture we don't understand. We understand a lot about the protein and DNA interactions, some of the molecular details of that, some of the details of the protein-protein interactions in this complex, but we don't really understand the higher order structure, so that's still a, a challenge in the field. So now I've just shown you a functional telomere, but if telomeres cease to function, and we use the term telomere dysfunction to just describe that general state of a telomere that is not carrying out those capping functions and other functions that I will get to, there are a couple of different ways this can happen. The first is if the tract of telomeric repeat is simply too short. It's just not enough of the uh, length of the repeat to form a nice long array that can form this higher order structure that's necessary. This kind of dysfunction caused by the shortening of the telomere, that can happen naturally, and it does, and we'll get back to that in a moment because this is going to be an important part of these lectures, and in fact it will be really the focus of the third lecture in this series. The other way that telomeres can become dysfunctional is through one reason or another, experimentally induced most commonly, one or more of these proteins cannot bind correctly to the telomeric DNA. If its binding is disrupted through some molecular intervention or other. In both cases, cells sense and respond to this state of telomere dysfunction. Now indeed, cells have a lot of very um, strict regulatory reactions to the lack of proper telomeric DNA. And the consequences for the cell is that usually this state of a cell, uh, cell's telomeres, telomere dysfunction, through one reason or another, will mean that the cell will cease to divide. So this limits cell renewal capability if this happens to one or more of its telomeres in the cell. If by chance the cell does continue to multiply, now those telomeres become subject to the very kinds of fusions, the DNA joining events that I told you telomeres shouldn't allow to happen. And that can lead to genomic instability because the end-to-end -end joining of telomeres to themselves, other telomeres that is, or to broken DNAs, that can cause the chromosomes which fuse to each other to tear the cells apart as the cells divide, leading to genomic instability. So clearly telomere function is very important for cells. And in fact, one of the consequences of genomic instability in human cells is that the cell can become cancerous. I'm just going to show you a picture. If you look under the microscope of some cells in which we've disrupted one of the telomeric proteins, what you can see is, remember I told you the blue double uh, things are the chromosomal DNAs? And look, here's a chromosome here in which there's been a telomere fusion. So here are the two telomeres at the end, Here's the other two, all the way here, but there are fused telomeres here. So this is now a chromosome that has two centromeres. It's got a centromere here, it's got a centromere here, and if those two centromeres try to pull apart in a cell that is dividing, the chromosome will get ripped apart. Here's another example of such an end-to-end -end fused chromosome. This kind of change can happen if you disrupt the telomeric integrity by, for example, disrupting the binding of proteins. The other kind of function, it's related, but we can distinguish it. The other kind of function of telomeres is that they have to allow for complete replication of the telomeric DNA. So what's the issue here? Well, the mechanism of DNA replication, the machinery of DNA replication, has a particular quirk to it. It's very good at faithfully copying 
almost all the way along the length of the chromosomal DNA, or any linear DNA, but the makeup of the DNA replication machinery is such that it cannot copy the very, very end of the linear DNA, such as a eukaryotic chromosomal DNA. Now, the predicted and observed consequence of that inability is that each time the DNA replicates, which it has to do as the cell divides, and then the cell divides, the daughter DNAs are predicted to become shorter and shorter and shorter. And this is just a simple consequence of the nature of the DNA replication machinery that is otherwise so good at replicating all the way along, you know, the, all the length of the chromosomal DNA. But the very ends cannot be completely replicated without some form of compensatory mechanism. So what's the consequence of this loss? Well, obviously something has to compensate in the long run, otherwise we wouldn't be here. But even on a shorter time frame, as cells divide and divide and the DNA gets shorter and shorter, one might predict that there would come a point when there wouldn't be enough of something or other at the end that then the chromosomes would no longer be able to support cell division, and the cells might eventually undergo what's called senescence. And indeed, James Watson, in 1972, just considering the mechanism of DNA replication, proposed this constant shortening problem. And Lomovnikov, around the same time, proposed that, in fact, perhaps such loss of terminal DNA, without knowing at that stage what the molecular nature of the terminal DNA was, Lomovnikov proposed that perhaps such gradual loss could be something that underlies the eventual senescence of cells that is seen sometimes when, for example, human cells are grown in culture. This was a prescient idea because, in fact, this indeed it has been found to be one of the causes of why human cells cannot replicate themselves. The cells cannot proliferate indefinitely in culture. Okay, so... Shortening of telomeric DNA is something that will be problematic for cells. How is this problem solved? Well, it's solved by an enzyme called telomerase. So I'd like to introduce you to telomerase now and how it was found. Telomerase was sought because there were a set of accumulating observations on telomeric DNA in cells, you know, the telomeric DNA as it was in cells in vivo, that couldn't be readily explained by what was currently known about DNA replication or DNA recombination or other kinds of DNA reactions at the time, which was the late 1970s, early 1980s. And let me give you some examples of such puzzling observations. Well, the first one was that in the simulated protozoan tetrahymena, which has a lot of very small mini-chromosomes and is therefore amenable to molecular analyses of its telomeric DNA by direct methods, the telomeric repeat sequences, remember I told you about the repeated sequences repeated over and over at the end of chromosomes, the repeat sequence in this organism, G4T2 repeats, were heterogeneous in their number in different molecules in a population of otherwise homogeneous cells. And heterogeneous in this city, setting here is meaning these were uh, different in number. So some copies of the new chromosome would have 20 repeats on the end. Some would have 50, some 49, some 82, some 53. They all had different numbers of repeats in a sort of more or less normal distribution. So that was very surprising, because if you look, of course, at the internal region of a DNA, such as a chromosomal DNA, if you look at one cell uh, compared with another in a population of cells from, say, one organism, it should always be an identical sequence. So here were different numbers of repeats at the ends of different molecules in a population of cells that should have otherwise been homogeneous, and were homogeneous in their internal regions of the chromosome. 
Now, a second kind of observation was uh, a somewhat more complicated one, and it means that I have to tell you, uh, just take a moment to tell you about the life cycle of a particular group of ciliated protozoans, which uh, the species Tetrahymena, in which these G4T2 repeats track, were found to be the telomeric track. The tetrahymena um, cells go through a life cycle stage where they have a somatic nucleus which undergoes developmentally controlled fragmentation. And fascinatingly, telomeric DNA sequences were added directly to those freshly formed DNA ends, making from longer chromosomes a series of shorter mini chromosomes. How did that telomeric DNA get added to the ends? It wasn't clear. The third observation came from observing the cells of an organism which causes sleeping sickness, a single-celled parasitic organism called a trypanosome, and these were being propagated in the laboratory setting, and what was found was that the telomeric DNA restriction fragments, the end fragments of the chromosomes in these organisms, were gradually getting longer and longer and longer. And this didn't look like, say, recombination, and was certainly not expected for normal, as one thought about it, DNA replication. The fourth observation was, again, something that came out of an experiment that I'll have to explain. Now, one could put circular plasmids into yeast cells. And if the plasmids are linearized, essentially they're unstable. They get gobbled up or rarely will recombine into the chromosomes and thus be preserved. But what was found was that if one simply grafted onto the ends of such a linearized and therefore normally very unstable yeast plasmid, if one grafted onto its ends tetrahymena telomeric DNA fragments, the telomeres of tetrahymena mini chromosomes, and introduced those into cells, so the grafting was done in vitro with enzymes and the purified DNA molecules, and then the resulting hybrid of the yeast linearized plasmid and the telomeres added onto its end. That was introduced into yeast cells. Those were maintained in yeast cells as linear mini chromosomes and yeast telomeric DNA repeats were grafted on somehow inside the yeast cell to the ends of the tetrahymena telomeric repeats. And that didn't look like a reaction one would expect from a standard known model of DNA replication or recombination. All of these suggested that perhaps there was some capability of cells. All right, I'm a little, uh, she's a little slow, I'm not really uh, into this, but uh, let's hear a little bit uh, from David Icke. And no matter, no matter what, he said about Israel, this is Israel's response. Why? Because Israel is the fiefdom of the Rothschild dynasty, which also controls the American administration, the British administration, and so Rothschild's one arm is not going to criticize Rothschild's other arm. In the Matrix movie, there's something called the Zion mainframe. Well, Zionism, Rothschild Zionism, is in so many ways a mainframe of this network. And it pervades all the way through. And it's not about all oh, these Jewish people here and these Jewish people there. It's, like, it's Rothschild Zionists who are there, and they answer to the Rothschild dynasty. Therefore, they play out the agenda of the web in a coordinated way. Now, before I start this, a lot of names coming up. Yeah, I'm going to go just through a bit of the American administration and, and a few other things, just to give you a feel for it, for people that haven't seen the extent of this. Before I start, one fact. Jewish people in America are less than 2% of the population. A significant number of them will not be Rothschild Zionists, and therefore the ratio of Rothschild Zionists is even smaller, significantly smaller, than the 2%. Okay. Obama's immediate handler is a guy called Rahm Emanuel. He has served in the Israeli army, he's the White House Chief of Staff, he does uh, whatever he says. His father, Emmanuel's father, was a terrorist in the Ergun terrorist group that 
bombed Israel into existence in 1948. And uh, this is the relationship between Rahm Emanuel, uh, he's the kind of Peter Mandelson of America, and uh, Obama. Hey, want a Nobel Peace Prize? I can sort it some. I can sort it some, no problem. No, no pictures like that, by the way, by a guy called David Dees, who's a, a political artist, brilliant, uh, American, work, uh, works out of Sweden. Uses images so powerfully to tell a, a, a thousand words as they go. This guy is the second handler in the White House. His name's David Axelrod, Rothschild Zionist, and he um, was the man who orchestrated the entire election campaigns of Obama against Hillary Clinton and then against John McCain. The main funder and orchestrator of the funding, in terms of individuals, of Obama was a guy called George Soros, Rothschild Zionist, who manipulates countries and, and, and uses his networks and funding to create coups in countries where they want to change the regime, regime change. And he bets on currencies, um, like he bet on the pound years ago, and makes a fortune out of the demise of the economy of other countries, because he has no empathy. Henry Kissinger. Massive Rothschild Zionist to serve that dynasty's agenda for uh, 40 years, if not 50 years. And he's now an advisor to Obama, even though he's a, a, officially a Republican. The American economy, the American um, economic team, is led by Timothy Geithner, Treasury Secretary, Rothschild Zionist, and Riley Summers, Rothschild Zionist. The entire Obama budget is run by the budget director, Peter Orzag, Rothschild Zionist. This man was advising the Russian treasury when the Russian governments were giving state assets uh, away to Rothschild Zionist oligarchs, including Roman Abramovich, the owner of Chelsea Football Club, by the way. It's very easy to become a, a billionaire when a state says, have the, these assets worth a billion, <laughs> billions of pounds, thank you very much, it's a piece of cake. You can buy a football club if you want. And this man's company was also advising the Icelandic Central Bank in the run-up to the Icelandic crash. The Federal Reserve in America, which controls the American economy in so many ways, it's a privately owned, not government-owned central bank, and it's privately owned by the Rothschilds and the affiliates of the Rothschilds, is Bernard Bernanke, Rothschild Zionist. He replaced... Alan Greenspan, Rothschild Zionist, who was head of the Federal Reserve from Reagan Bush right up into the Boy Bush um, administration, and he systematically took away the checks and balances which allowed the mayhem of 2008 to unfold. We keep hearing about Goldman Sachs and all the mayhem that it's created, both in the crash of 2008 and the crash of the economy in Greece, fundamentally uh, involved Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is a fiefdom of the Rothschilds, headed by Lord Blankfein, Rothschild Zionist. The World Bank, headed by a Rothschild Zionist. The IMF, International Monetary Fund, headed by a Rothschild Zionist. European Central Bank, headed by a Rothschild Zionist. A stream of so-called czars, as they call them in America, controlling different policies and areas, policy areas of the Obama administration, Rothschild Zionists, including Cass Sunstein, who has actually written a paper saying people who have conspiracy theories should either be banned from expressing them or taxed for expressing them. Taxed! Climate change policy in the Obama administration is controlled by Carol Brown, a Rothschild Zionist, and Todd Steen, Rothschild Zionist. Major area of policy. The uh, American administration is utterly awash with Rothschild Zionists, and that is not by accident. It's because they're agents of the dynasty or agents of the control system. It's not about race. Mossad is not the uh, intelligence agency of Israel. It's the intelligence agency of the Rothschilds, and that's why it turns up all over the world um, in false flag set up terrorist events and assassinations and all that stuff. Because it's not carrying out the policy of Israel, it's carrying out the policy of the Rothschilds that control Israel. Now let's look at 9-11. The World Trade Center lease was purchased just a few weeks before 
by Larry Silverstein, Rothschild Zionist, and Frank Lowry, Rothschild Zionist. And the deal was done with this guy called Eisenberg, Louis Eisenberg, Rothschild Zionist, the head of the New York Port Authority. The head of the CIA who investigated um, what happened on 9-11, George Tenet, Rothschild Zionist. Um, the Patriot Act, which was brought out, the Orwellian Take Your Freedoms Away the Patriot Act in America, was co-authored, justified by 9-11, though it was written before, because they knew it was coming, uh, by Michael Shertoff, uh, whose mother was a Mossad agent, and who became the second head later of Homeland Security, an organization Orwellian that was justified by 9-11. At the time of 9-11, in the run-up to it, and then the war on terror and all that stuff, the Pentagon was dominated by Paul Wolfowitz, uh, Rothschild Zionist, Doug Zakheim, the comptroller, who managed to lose trillions of dollars and still got away with it. And by the way, when one announcement was made of what, how much he'd lost or, or had gone missing in the Pentagon, they announced it on September the 10th, 2001. I wonder if they realized that because of that, it would never see the light of day. Doug Zakheim, Rothschild Zionist, the people like uh, Douglas Feet or Fife, Rothschild Zionist in the Pentagon. Now, as I've said earlier, the Bush administration was dominated and controlled by what became known as the neocons, the neoconservatives, which were a Rothschild Zionist organization, led by people like Richard Pearl, Rothschild Zionist, William Crystal, Rothschild Zionist, John Bolton, Rothschild Zionist, in belief in nothing, if, if nothing else. And then the 9-11 Commission report, which was the official report investigating 9-11, they wanted Kissinger to uh, head it uh, first until the public he didn't, didn't take that seriously and he had to step down. But that report, which agreed that the official story of 9-11 was true, was written and overseen by Philip Zelico, Rothschild Zionist. The judge, Alvin uh, Hellerstein, who is uh, hearing and overseeing the cases of the 9-11 families, who were taking out lawsuits to try to find the truth of 9-11, etc. Rothschild Zionists making sure that truth never comes out. Think of the ratio I said earlier as I go through this. The man who coined the phrase, he was a Bush speechwriter, uh, the axis of evil, which targeted Iraq before they invaded Iran and, and North Korea, was David Fu, Rothschild Zionist. So when you look at this, because Israel is the victim of the Rothschilds, you see that this dynamic, so you'd think, is the man of 300 million people, the superpower, is the, is, the, is the most powerful of the two. No, no, he is controlled from there. Because the Rothschilds control them. Do you know Israel has the second biggest F-16 fleet in the world? The biggest outside of America. It's a sliver of land. How did they get them? Doug Zakheim, as controller of the Pentagon, Rothschild Zionist, made a load of uh, weaponry and planes in America scrap when they weren't so they could be passed for a song to Israel. These two guys, they uh, produced a book uh, last year, The Israel Lobby and U.S. Foreign Policy, and they say this. Israel receives about $3 billion in direct foreign assistance each year, which is roughly one-fifth of America's entire foreign aid budget. In per capita terms, the United States gives each Israeli a direct subsidy worth about $500 a year. This largesse is especially striking when one realizes that Israel is now a wealthy industrial state with a per capita income roughly equal to South Korea and Spain. Another writer, a former BBC and ITN journalist, produced a book, Zionism, the Real Enemy of the Jews, and my God, is that true. And he points out, Jewish people make up less than 2% of the American population, but account for 50%, I would say what Rothschild Zionists, 50% of the political campaign contributions. And that's why, no matter how these people argue at election time, including this country and others, they all agreed on one thing. What goes on in Gaza? Keep quiet. Keep your head down. And I block that out, because I don't want anyone to see what's behind it. It's horrific. This man, a magnificent uh, Israeli, called Mordecai uh, Venunu, went to jail for 18 years for revealing the truth that Israel is a nuclear power. He's still got massive um, restrictions on his movement and what he can say. And you know, and, and he announced officially, officially, that he was continuing it. There was an official policy that on, on um, Israel's nuclear weaponry, 
America doesn't ask and Israel doesn't say. That's an official policy. Iran hasn't even got it yet and they want to invade the bloody place. This lady, Kay Griggs, was married to a colonel in the uh, United States Marine Corps and as a result she was given a tour of the Middle East section of the State Department. There's a video on, on, on the internet where she tells of her experience. And what she says is, um, everywhere she went was Zionists. Everywhere she went was Zionist literature, in, in, in room after room in this department. And eventually she said to one of them, where's the Palestinians? And they're looking after them. And she said, uh, one of them said, ah, oh, we look after that. Palestinians have got no bloody chance. So stitch up. The main lobby group in America is called APEC, America Israel Public Affairs Committee, which sounds like an official, but it's a lobby group. It's headed by a guy called Lee Rosenberg, who is a very close friend of him and comes from the same political cesspit that we call Chicago. So when this question is asked, Americans, do you dare to say Israeli terrorism? No, no, because of the way it's uh, controlled, like I say. Rothschild Zionists control the media and Hollywood. Don't take my word for it. Los Angeles Times columnist Joel Steen, Rothschild Zionist, wrote an article proclaiming that Americans who don't think Jews, I would say Rothschild Zionists, control Hollywood, are just plain dumb. I had to scour the trades to come up with six Gentiles in high position at entertainment companies, but lo and behold, even one of that six, AMC president Charles Collier, turns out to be a Jew. As a proud Jew, I want America to know of our accomplishment. Yes, we control Hollywood. Leading um, Israeli paper columnist said, the Jews, uh, Rothschild Zionists, I would say again, the Jews do control the American media. This is very clear and claiming otherwise is an insult to common knowledge. And what do the media do? They keep the truth from us and keep us diverted from what's really going on. It's an elephant in the bloody living room and people are terrified of going there because they're terrified of being called racist and anti-Semitic. Well, that's true, and it's uh, what uh, we've been putting up with. Now, I just put that up on my Facebook site. But there's a reason. There's a reason. There's a reason for this. There's a reason education sucks, and it's the same reason that it will never, ever, ever be fixed. It's never going to get any better. Don't look for it. Be happy with what you got. Because the owners of this country don't want that. I'm talking about the real owners now. The big, the wealthy that the real owners, the big wealthy businesses, which that control things and make all the important decisions, forget the politicians. They're, 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 they're irrelevant. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the State Houses, the City Hall. They got the judges in their back pocket. And they own all the big media, media, all the big media companies, so they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, lobbying to get what they want. Well, we know what they want. They want more for themselves and less for everybody else. But I'll tell you what they don't want. They don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking. They don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. They're not interested in that. That doesn't help them. That's against their interests. That's right. You know something? And that's why they don't want you sharing the show. This is why they don't want you donating to me. This is why they don't want you reading the Free American. And this is why they've tried to kill me and close me down. Exactly what George Carlin is saying while well, he was still alive, and now he's dead, too. They don't want people who are smart enough to sit around the kitchen table and figure out how badly they're getting fucked by a system that threw them overboard 30 fucking years ago. They don't want that. You know what they want? They want obedient workers. Obedient workers. People who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork, and just dumb enough to passively accept all these increasingly shittier jobs with the lower pay, the longer hours, the reduced benefits, the end of overtime, and the vanishing pension that disappears the minute you go to collect it. And now they're coming for your Social Security money. They want your fucking retirement money. They want it back so they can give it to their criminal friends on Wall Street. And you know something? They'll get it. They'll get it all from you sooner or later because they own this fucking place. It's a big club. 
and you ain't in it. You and I are not in the big club. And by the way, it's the same big club they used to beat you over the head with all day long when they tell you what to believe. All day long, beating you over the head in their meeting, telling you what to believe, what to think, and what to buy. The table is tilted, folks. The game is rigged. Nobody seems to notice. Nobody seems to care. Good, honest, hardworking people, white collar, blue collar, doesn't matter what color shirt you have on. Good, honest, hardworking people continue. These are people of modest means. Continue to elect these rich cocksuckers who don't give a fuck about them. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't care about you at all. At all. At all. You know? Church, go to freeamerican.com. Make a donation today. Do it today. I don't care whether it's a dollar. Doesn't matter. Make it five dollars. Read the first 11 issues of the magazine. Like David Ike's, I deal with this. I don't care who your grandmother slept with. I don't care who you're related to. I don't care what your religion is. The Constitution takes care of that. You can hug a tree, I'll hand you a pair of tweezers to pull the splinters out. You can bang your head against that wailing wall until you knock yourself out. I'll watch. You can get on your hands and knees, stick your nose in the dirt, and pray to Mecca two or three times a day, and I'll try to shoot the St. Bernard out of you. You can pray to God for a Cadillac, and I'll put in a good word. Maybe he won't drop it on top of your fat ass. I am Clay Douglas. I am the free American. I've been trying to get these truths out to you, both George Carlin, both David Icke. And here's what we do, folks. Here's what we do. We try to find something we don't like. We try to find something that we don't agree with. We try to find some reason to put anybody down that's out there trying to make an effort because you've been programmed. You've been programmed like a computer, garbage in, garbage out. You know, well, you can find something wrong with Ron Paul. You can find something wrong with Clay Douglas. If you look hard enough, oh, you know, Clay Douglas smokes marijuana. Yeah, and that's why I'm still healthy at 67 years old. It, well, I don't smoke pot. I, I take Valium. I take Valium. Yeah. You are working for the pharmaceutical companies. If you're on Medicare and part of that Medicare is paying for those drugs for you that your doctor's giving you, there's, again, there are answers here. This whole show was about products that heal you, that are good for you. And the pharmaceutical companies ain't part of it. They're part of the big club that's beating you over the head with it. We've got answers. We've got answers here, folks. One of them is to support me. Keep me working. I, I work every day to get the truth out to you. To get the information out to you. To get you stuff you can use. I'm not an Alex Jones. I don't want you to be afraid. I want you to, I hope I piss you off. I hope it pisses you off to know how you're being used, how your children are being used, how your children are being poisoned by their vaccinations, by their doctors. I want you to be pissed off about that. And I want you to consider the Liberty Village concept, working with your neighbors, to use the Constitution Club. Use the Constitution Club to find out who your neighbors are and communicate with them. Just start in your town, start in your county, and stop this. The war on terror, Toka just mentioned, war on terror, costs a billion dollars a day. The war on terror is a war against you. Get Discover what's really going on in the world. I'm not the mainstream media will tell you. At Truth Radio, you can listen live or listen to a live selection of archived programs. TruthRadio.com. The truth is out there. And you've just heard it.
Hübsch, ihre Schnabel ist schon.